Welcome to another exciting edition of Wagner Webcast Live. I'm your host, Brian Bushlack. Glad you could join us wherever you may be, across the Pacific Northwest, up and down the West Coast, around the world. We've got Mark Bunzel joining us from Margaritaville. An update in just a minute from Mark, as well as Leonard and Lorena Landon joining us from HQ in Anacortes, where it's not snowing right now. We're glad to report that, and uh, I want to thank everybody for joining us. Mike Beamer will be along with us here in just a bit to talk maintenance. Mike, good to see you as well. But first, we kick it off with you, Mr. Bunzel, down in paradise. Where are you coming from tonight? Well, that's a good question, Brian. It's always fun to be, you know, reporting remotely. And uh, I'm on the uh, Virgin Islands Flotilla 2. And right tonight, we are at Leverick Bay. Uh, just a stone's throw across from me is Sir Richard Branson's private island, Mosquito Island and Necker Island. And uh, our group is just having a great time. We uh, Today, we rented a, a safari truck, which is one of those trucks that has two benches down the middle and a canvas overhead. And we packed our group of 10 on board. And I drove over the top of the island. And uh, it was a little harrowing at times. And we went down to a magical place called the Baths. And Leonard, why don't you go ahead, play the pictures while I'm talking. And I'll point out the picture of the bass. These are pictures from our group from last week. And yes, the water is truly that color. And, and it feels so good when the, when the conditions are like that with the sun shining, the sandy beach, it's warm, the air is 80 degrees, and it's snowing back in the Northwest. I, I think that's just fantastic. But our group is having a great time. Tomorrow we go to uh, we're going to do some sailing this week. We're on a, uh, uh, a Voyage Charters 50-foot sailing catamaran, and we're going to do some downwind sailing tomorrow. Really looking forward to that. We're going to go down to a place called, by the way, we're right in that picture right now. Uh, that picture is taken from Hog Heaven, and the marina we're at is right straight in the middle there. Uh, for those who, who know the area, Saba Rock is off in the distance, and Richard Branson's Necker Island is over there slightly to the upper, uh, the upper left. So uh, tomorrow we'll head down to the uh, Cooper Island Beach Club. We'll have a nice lunch there on the deck. You can go ahead and trigger the, keep cycling the slides. There we go. And uh, uh, they have a, a rum bar for tasting with over 125 different varieties of rum. And we've agreed as a crew, we're not going to taste every rum. Uh, they do sell them in flights of five, and we're going to do a little bit just to get stay in the spirit. Uh, but then that'll, that'll be our trip for tomorrow. And then the next day, we'll be down to Norman Island, and uh, we'll wrap up our, our trip at Pirates and the Willie T. So... Uh, uh, the weather has just been fantastic. We're just having a ball. Uh, the boat has operated great, no major problems. And uh, it, we're going to do this again. Oh, there's me at the baths. Uh, and we're going to do this again uh, next November and again a year from now in April. So people who are interested in signing up will uh, uh, give us a, a call at the Wagner Guide office uh, or uh, you can uh, send us an email at info at wagnerguide.com and we'll tell you more about it and tell you how you can sign up. This is Devil's Bay, uh, these pictures at the baths. 
Uh, this is our group trip from last week. This is the baths again, and uh, you can pretty much see what's going on and, and uh, uh, everybody's just having a wonderful time here and I can't recommend it enough. Hey Mark, uh, you weren't with us on the last couple of shows. Tell us more about the boat that you're on. Uh, this is a uh, Voyage Charters 50 foot catamaran. It's built in South Africa. Voyage Charters builds their own boats and they do a fantastic job. Mike Beamer would approve of the way the electrical and everything's laid out. And right now we are at the dock, but we're running everything off the generator. We've got three air conditioning systems on board, a full galley. It's uh, very, very well equipped and has just given everybody enough room to stretch out, socialize. And as I said, we're having a great time with it. Yeah, it sounds like a great trip. I mean, 125 rums. I mean, you even get a few of those and you might be walking around like Jack Sparrow. So you got to be careful, right? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm going to be very careful and, and I'm captaining the boat and I've signed in the contract for the charter company that I, I uh, now will be set for overnight on a boaty ball, but uh, I am not allowed to captain this boat after I've had uh, a few of those rums. So this is, uh, uh, there, there is a limit to the, uh, the joy and festivity. Yeah, that's a good rule and uh, good to be uh, anchored overnight that night. Well, good, uh, good report there. It looks like a great trip. And I know a lot of people, uh, who were watching what last week's webcast are now with you there. Right. So they flew down and, uh, yeah, that was pretty amazing. They flew down and they said, Oh, we saw the show. We saw the show. And now here we are. So, uh, yeah, it was good fun. That's great. That's great. Let's, uh, check with Leonard and Lorena now on updates, obviously Easter weekend coming up and it's a big weekend uh, for boating, right? That's right. Lots of Easter activities. And just a reminder, the Seattle Easter boat parade is this Saturday, April 16 at 2 PM in Lake Union. So go down and enjoy the, the parade. And then in DC, Future Gardens is open. And they are having an Easter bunny hunt. So folks uh, 17 years and younger can uh, find ceramic bunnies. There are 12 ceramic bunnies hidden throughout the garden. And you bring the bunnies back and you'll get some Easter treats. So it's a great way to explore the gardens, future gardens. And most of the restaurants are now open at the gardens as well. So that's a, two fun events to take in. That's great. And uh, I know you've got an update too on that legislation out of BC. I know a lot of people are following this. So if you could give us an update, that'd be great. Yes. Um, Canada is drafting uh, legislation for luxury tax on boats over $250,000, which also includes if you do any improvements over $5,000 made by the owner within 12 months, within a 12 month period, that would also uh, be subject to luxury tax. So NMMA, the National Marine Manufacturers Association of Canada, of course, are concerned about the impact on the industry that, that this would have. And they're asking that um, DC voters, Canadian voters, go ahead and contact member of parliament, your local member, and they do have a template letter that you can use and fill out and send in. And for more information, you can go to boatingindustry.ca forward slash current hyphen news forward slash 9407. So voters, Canadian voters are encouraged to uh, let their, um, their feelings known on this issue and, and help promote I'll put that in the chat. Yeah. Yeah. I saw quite a bit going back, obviously, via email and chat on this this week. This, again, is a 10% flat tax, correct? I mean, so anything above $250,000 is subject to this flat tax, right? Yes. Uh, and the fact that improvements, that's the real killer there when you go to make improvements on a boat to have luxury tax put on that is kind of a sore subject you might say yeah it's going to have a huge impact not only in canada obviously with you know manufacturers from around the world selling new boats or or you know a lot of implications from this so we'll uh we'll keep an eye on it we appreciate that update leonard too i know uh 
no go zones with the whales. What's the latest there? Well, hold on a second. Sorry, I was trying to put that in the chat here. <laughs> I want to talk about the no go zones again. We talked about this uh, a couple of weeks ago. And let me bring up a share screen on this. I've got a, a, a map that we can uh, look at on that. And uh, as soon as I find the right one, this one. Uh, so, and uh, so this is uh, in, uh, I want to talk specifically about the two at the upper part up in the Gulf Islands. Uh, we're just a, a reminder that on the on the west side of San Juan Island here in the U.S. side, there's a voluntary no voluntary no go zone, and that's when the whales are in, are in the area. Uh, that's a quarter mile offshore. That's voluntary. It's year round when the whales are there. And the one that's of interest right now are the two actually are the ones in B.C. The one of them is off the west southwest side of Pender Island uh, up here. And then the other one is off the southwest tip of Saturna. The, the important thing to know is that they're enforcing this, or they were in uh, last year. This, these two zones go into effect June 1st, and they run until November 30th of each year. So right now, they're not in effect as far as we know. Last year, we had reports one a boater that was sighted uh, in the one just off of Pender Island. That happens to be right off of Bedwell Harbor. So after you clear customs in Bedwell Harbor, uh, the the normal path is to go along the west side of well, of North Pender Island, and that's what some boater was doing last September and inadvertently went into the area. They were uh, sighted, and they were fined three thousand five hundred dollars for uh, intruding in that area. the The fine was reduced to two thousand four hundred and something dollars, but that's still that's it's nice that it was reduced from thirty five hundred, but that's still a, a bad day. So just want to make sure make uh, make sure everyone is aware that these uh, no go no go areas are in effect uh, from June 1st to September 30th. The um, the other one on that one. Hold on a second. Uh, we assume at this point these are going to be in effect for 2022. There's been no official notice yet, but we it, it's best to assume that they're going to be there uh, and stay out of those areas. Uh, it's no boats in, in those areas at all. And it is it's irrespective of whether there are whales there or not. And again, the other one is off of the southwest tip of uh, Saturna Island. And of course, they're the ones that are depicted in here. They're titled the Sanctuary Zones. So if you want to go searching on Google and find the official uh, the Department of Fisheries DFO uh, website for that and look at their maps, go to go looking for Sanctuary Zones and you'll find them there. Um, Wanted to let me stop the share screen on that. And uh, the other one I wanted to talk about was uh, there's a closure area that uh, we should be aware of. This is uh, it's called Fury Cove, and this is a BC Parks, BC, uh, and it's just north of Cape Caution. This happens to be the spot where a lot of boaters stay uh, overnight and anchor just after going northbound around Cape Caution or in preparation of going south. And uh, we learned this. From one of our uh, one of our readers out there, and somebody was actually in one of our Southeast Alaska classes, and uh, reported back that this uh, is closed. And indeed, if you go to the BC Web uh, BC Parks website, it is closed. And it started uh, with the COVID time, so it uh, is something that uh, is has been in effect for quite a while now. There, the we checked on it, updated that, and indeed, it is still closed. Fury Cove is what's closed. It's part of Penrose Island. Uh, Marine Park in BC, the and specifically it calls out Fury Cove. The other, uh, the rest of the park on Penrose Island is open, and there are two alternative anchorages on the east side of Penrose Island, and that's Frying Pan Bay and Big uh, Big Fry, Frying Pan but Fry, Fry, Fry Pan, Pan, not Fry. Frying. <laughs> Fry Pan Bay Just and Fry. and Big Fry Pan Bay. So those those are large bays, and it's a nice option. Uh, to anchor just on the east side of the island. We have back, we've checked out both of those and they are, they're good protected anchorages. It's about uh, another mile or so uh, east of, of uh, Fury Cove. And I think that was my set of updates. You had something else? Yes, you? I had uh, another news item. Uh, the province of DC, they're asking voters to please report any sightings of the invasive European green crab. And if you can keep an eye out and help sound Greater Vancouver or anywhere in the Salish Sea, it's a very invasive species. 
it destroys and degrades eelgrass by foraging and burrowing much more so than our native crabs. And of course, eelgrass is very important for fish spawning. And uh, the green crab also competes with our native crabs for food and space and preys upon native shellfish. And the way to identify these crabs, uh, look for the serrated uh, pentacon shaped shell and look for five sharp spines or points on uh, the side of each eye. Very distinctive, you'll see five sharp uh, points on each side. So they definitely look different and uh, ask that you please report if you see these crabs and you can report at AIS Pacific at DFO hyphen MPO dot GC dot CA. So should you throw a crab pot out and try to catch them? Or I mean, you just, you report them and, and, and float away. You might pull one up uh, with the other crabs. And if you find one of these odd looking crabs, please report it, yes. They don't look that edible. <laughs> they don't look very pleasant. Nah. <laughs> eat it, I was just asking, what do you do? I mean, is it, you know, take a picture of it and email it in, I guess. Okay, wow, that's, uh, we'll have to get a picture of these guys for our next episode so we, we'll be able to specifically identify them. So, there's your homework for our next episode. Okay, time to welcome our special guest. Good idea, Brian. What's yeah, that? I have a few more updates, Brian. Okay. okay. To touch on a few marinas, DC marinas, just touch on a few so Mike has plenty of time for his presentation and we'll continue uh, more on DC marinas next Thursday. But voters have been asking about Hartley Bay, if the fuel dock open, and we can report yes. Uh, the fuel dock is open uh, to non-residents. They were closed last year. So you may stop and get fuel. The band is still deciding if they're going to open Moorage and the community to non-residents. So we'll keep uh, track of that as well. And then the tiny village of New Vancouver, which is in the Broughton Islands, they have made the decision to remain closed for 2022. It is a very small native village. And they tell us so far that they planning to stay closed. And Leonard talked about Fury Cove, uh, Shearwater. Lots of voters have been asking us about Shearwater. It was purchased by a local band and there was concern that maybe it would not be open. I just spoke with them. The fuel dock is open. The bar and grill is open. Uh, Moorage is open, grocery store, marina store, and the shipyard is open. So it's back to business as usual. So that's good news because it's definitely one of those oasis in Northern BC where voters stop for fuel and supplies. So uh, they're open, ready to welcome guests. And just a reminder, all of those, all that information is on Wagner. Yeah, we'll be stopping there with the Wagner Flotilla will be stopping there. Great. Okay. Great. Well, that's good to hear. Anything uh, else on the updates? We will save them for our uh, updates next Thursday, where we focus on on uh, many more marinas in BC and what's happening, what's open, what's closed, and uh, the plans they're making. That's great. Yeah, you guys do such a great job keeping everybody updated. We appreciate it. I'm sorry I jumped the gun there because I was excited to get Beamer back on because we did a podcast with him, I don't know, a couple of years ago. And I learned more in probably an hour with Mike Beamer than I had in, in years. So I want to introduce Mike officially. Welcome to the webcast. Mike Beamer is the department chair for the Skagit Valley College Marine Maintenance Program at the Marine Technology Center in Anacortes. Uh, he's been presenting and teaching professionally for about 20 years and holds a master's degree in education. I know many of you already know Mike, and you're glad to see him back. Uh, he and his wife, Lynette, have cruised throughout the Pacific Northwest uh, from Anacortes to Southeast Alaska on their motor sailor, the Black Pearl. And his areas of expertise include diesel engines, electrical systems, which is very interesting uh, to hear him talk about that, uh, solar, new battery technologies, and 
other areas of boat maintenance. Mike, welcome to the show. Great to see you and have you back. Well, thank you, Brian. Yes, it's uh, always fun to do these little events and and start getting involved. There's so much energy right now um, as our weather is breaking. Not quite as nice as what uh, Mr. Bunzel is experiencing, but it's definitely that time when we start digging around and and getting our boats ready to go. I've been out on a couple of shakedown cruises already, uh, Lynette and I, and so amongst trying to balance our regular job. But um, yeah, I just want to spend a little bit of time tonight uh, talking about checklists and how you get your boat ready to go and how you pay attention to things as our boats become more and more complicated. And you know that complication is good and it's a two-sided card because okay. the good is you know, comfort and all the things we want to, to enjoy and have, but yet we don't want to be slaves to them and we want our, you know, everything to be kind of reliable. So um, I put together a little presentation I'll share. Um, I'm definitely open to questions at the end. And um, you guys will be, uh, Leonard and Raina monitoring the chat as we go and they can always pop in and ask me questions if they happen. I'm going to try and share a few free resources and, and just get us kickstarted and down, down in the trenches of maintenance. It's uh, my job I love, but it's not the most, we, we like to have boats to take us places and for adventure. And like Mark said, these side trips and, um, and somehow I'm the guy that's down in the weeds, checking the batteries and the motors and trying to make sure that everything works and, and train new technicians, which we definitely need. And so that's my passion. And we'll share a little bit of that tonight with everybody. So, um, so here we go, share the screen. And we're gonna talk about checklists tonight. Um, but before we do, um, it was put out there, uh, Leonard and Lorena, the Wagner guide, we have a little prize tonight. And so uh, we have a tool bag. It's very appropriately named for somebody who has a degree from UW. It's a nice Husky bag. Oh. And I know Leonard, you Cougars. It's probably why you're getting rid of it, you know, but um, so we're gonna have a little competition and I have, I got to admit, I'm kind of a tool junkie, three or four different bags. And so this is a bag that was kicking around at Marine Tech. And tonight, what we're going to do is have a little competition. So you got to look at these pictures and we're going to use the chat window and you can see I've, it's got a bunch of junk in the middle, pipe wrenches, and here's some electrical tools and my torch. And then, um, of course, you got to have a flashlight. I'm a headlamp. Or I, I go everywhere. I drive my truck with this on usually when I leave the boat. A uh, little screwdriver's tape. But what your task is tonight, the winner of this, this tool bag, now it's not full of tools. This is just a nice new tool bag that didn't fit in the boat or whatever. And so it'd be a place where you could start accumulating your stuff. So when you do these spring maintenance checklists, you have a place to keep all your tools. And so we're going to try and figure out the closest you know, like this is the price is right without going over. You can't say there's 500 tools in there and hope that everybody else is wrong. So put your uh, guesses in the chat. And eventually if we somebody hits it exactly, they'll let us know. Um, but if not, when we get to the end, we'll say, find out who is the closest. And then uh, Leonard says we can email uh, the Wagner guide or call them up and say, you were the winner. And, and get arrangements to get your new tool bag. So thanks to you guys, the Wagner Guide for doing this. I think it's super fun. I generally at my little barbecues could barely give away a hat. So nonetheless, a nice tool bag. Mike, this is incredible. The, the numbers are just streaming in. We're gonna have to watch that. <laughs> yeah. And see who we have as a winner. There we go. And luckily it's not me watching the numbers. So let's yes. talk about our boats for a second. Um, it's a huge investment and not just money. We just heard about luxury taxes and stuff, but just the emotional energy that people put in, the physical energy of washing it and hopefully doing your homework tonight and crawling around and getting ready for spring. Um, you know, and obviously none of us have to have a boat, but if you're tuned in, I bet you every one of us has or wants a boat for sure. Um, and just the time of, I, I've got some, some close friends that I know that have been looking for boats, literally hundreds of hours. So we've got this huge investment and we put a lot of, uh, you know, all our eggs in this basket of, we are going to go to Desolation Sound or we're going to do one of these flotillas that Mark's on and, you know, 
we have high expectations that it's going to work and perform the way that it should or that you know it used to and so i always reflect back i was just in florida um, got to go on four boat rides and checked out some national parks how many of you have flown recently if you look at the airline industry i mean there are nervous flyers i'm one of them but those planes just don't drop out of the sky they seem to work very very well i mean unless there's a hurricane and why aren't our boats like that? And our cars even, our cars are getting much better. Um, and, and I think the reason is it just comes down to cost. Um, obviously when the stakes are high, if you fall out of the sky, you know, there's definitely problems. Then there's a much higher level of maintenance and checklists and things that we need to do to keep that airplane safe. We wanna find the balance of how can we do that to maximize us on our boats without spending half of the value of the boat every single year um, to try and ensure that it's that that's going to happen so um, new cars are great uh, very reliable I think you can buy most new cars right now and and go you know 100,000 miles with very little maintenance or worries um, but our boats aren't there yet and what I tell everybody is the marine marketplace first of all lags at least a decade behind automobiles and probably 20 years behind the airplane industry. So we've got a ways to go and hopefully I don't frighten you off too much tonight, but I want to give you some, some definite resources and things to do. Um, I think you can, you can eliminate 90% of your problems by just getting involved and, and really looking around. Um, there's the black pearl that Mark um, or Brian was talking about in my little thing. Mark's been on board. We've went to Alaska numerous times in flotillas and many of you have seen her on the water. So if you see me out there, uh, go ahead and say hi. Um, it makes a very nice Pacific Northwest cruiser. I'm not so sure it'd be good in Mexico or Florida because I was just there, it's too hot. So could we do this with boats, make them as reliable as airplanes? Sure, there's some existing programs that are out there that, that happen. Um, and a lot of it has to do with charter boats. Mark's on a charter boat right now. And I have uh, former students that work in the BVI. Those boats go under, you know, they have a, a pretty good scrutiny and checklist of maintenance that has to happen. And they don't miss on that because if they miss on that, they're gonna lose a lot of revenue from a charter. And so if you look to some of the charter fleets, um, you know, I really only know my small area up here around Anacortes, but um, Northwest Explorations does a great job. I've worked with them. I have a lot of students also that work up there. And they have a very high expectation if your boat is in their charter fleet that you do a bunch of maintenance that we're going to talk about tonight. And I'm not going to talk about, I can't detail it all in, in, a, in the webcast, but I could give you resources so that you know how to do that. And if you do these things, you've got a much higher chance of really enjoying your cruise um, this next summer. So let's focus on this next summer because things are opening up and we are all looking to having a great time out and about cruising. Coast Guard, Navy, think about that. If you've got a government budget, we could make sure your boat was very reliable, right? So these programs exist. It's just not really in our recreational market yet. And so how do we implement that? So one of my challenges, I've been asked to put together checklists. I've got a bunch of information and is that boats are so different. If you look at a Catalina 30, you know, or a, a Catalina 27 with an outboard versus a 55 foot Fleming, the maintenance and the checklists are so wide. There's so many different things that, that might need to happen. And so how do we do that? And are you a do-it-yourself person where you're going to do a bunch of this maintenance versus relying on somebody else to do it? Um, of course, sailors think everything is free like the wind no it gets more complicated more expensive you've got rigging and sails and other systems to to check and of course you got to have a dinghy on your boat so do we include that and of course i think we should and then the history of your vessel if you have a vessel that has been very well maintained like um, when leonard decides to sell his boat i would buy that one because they get the award for like really taking care of maintenance and you don't want to buy a boat that hasn't been maintained if you can avoid it or you're going to really need a deeply dis, uh, reduced price so that you could get a bunch of that maintenance taken care of. So 
Um, I don't recommend a whole bunch of stuff. I'm not a salesman, luckily. I just like to share and give away my knowledge to my students mostly and to people who take our classes. But um, Nigel Calder has started a online website. And I've been asked for years to do this and I did not have the capacity. Um, I've been involved just in the under his wing a little bit and get to, to check out his site. And if you want to go to a level of self-reliance and learning how to do stuff yourself, whether it's just to save money, whether it's to be more reliant, if you're going to go further and further, like say to Southeast Alaska, um, it's a hundred percent online uh, curriculum. Nigel's going to be up here this fall filming some more videos in my lab. He's like, cause he knows we have a lot of cool equipment. And so um, they are paid courses, but um, there's a bunch of free resources as well on boat how to. And so that's a, that's a place to start right now. You know, if, if you really want to get in, they've got DC out electrical and engines coming. Um, it's one of the first that I know of, you know, commercially available resources for a boat owner. Uh, animation stuff is great. Electricity, I'm glad they started with electricity. We talked about it. It's the scariest thing for boats. You can't see it. Most people don't understand it. It's my favorite topic because I could just make stuff up usually, you know, with boat owners because they don't, if they don't understand electricity, then I can say anything I want. <laughs> so before we get into the this routine maintenance, um, there is the, the the stuff you have to do regularly. But the other thing is being in tune with your boat and looking for early warning signs. Um, I don't believe we are to the point where you could just 100% turn your boat over to somebody else to take care of it. You need to be involved, you know, and do your, do your due diligence. Watch the podcast to see like, where are these areas you can't drive your boat? Be on a forum. There's so many, you know, Facebook pages and forums for your particular boat. So what are the issues that are coming up? Um, you know, just be involved, finding that service provider that you trust and can go to the, you know, year after year and make sure that they're doing the things that need to be done on your boat. So that's what I call being in tune with your boat and, and not um, ignoring things. So pre-departure checks, um, underway, you really need to get in and, and check out your boat at least once during every passage. When I say check it out, you got to open up the engine hatch. You got to look at the shaft. You got to, you know, look at your rudder spaces or, um, because boats are kind of like that. The stuff will just sneak up on you. And I know it is so hard to do because I want to watch the birds and look for these whales, you know, when there's a, where there's a, um, an ex exemption zone where you can't take your boat in there because there's, you know, it's for whale habitat. I'm looking for the whales. And, and so, and of course, when you get to an anchorage, you should always peek at your engine again. And that's really hard because it's time to have a cocktail or just relax or read your book. Um, but early warning signs in our industry are, are usually there and th the average boat owner it's nothing special if you just take a few minutes and look, can get in and, and figure this stuff out. So your first a homework assignment, I'm a teacher. You didn't think everything was free tonight. You got homework assignments. And that is to just get into your boat and commit on spending some time. You might pick a cold, it is not snowing here and it's not that cold. The weather's gonna be nice this weekend without a lot of wind. So maybe not this weekend, but Plan on spending a day or two and really crawling around your boat. That headlamp I showed you in my tool bag, imperative. Make sure you can see everything and you crawl and you look around and, and just see what's going on. Um, my good friend, Kevin, I don't know if he's on tonight, but I love Kevin. I get all sorts of stories and phone calls and my students, they want to meet him. He's famous. Um, because Kevin likes solving problems. And so he goes on his friend's boats and, you know, one of them recently, the bow thruster or both the thrusters quit working. And if, if the boat owner had done a spring or a winter, had went through a checklist and just opened up and looked at every compartment, up in the bow, the, this little uh, wiring harness, the small control wires that goes up to the dash had fallen down into the bilge. And of course there's salt water down there once in a while, it corrodes. And even if it was fresh water, it corroded. And that caused the issue. And 
it just by virtue of him opening up and saying, hey, what's going on with this thruster? Let me look into the compartment, found it. Now, you don't want to crash your boat first and then go looking to see why it quit working. If you do this homework, and I say every space, the anchor locker, the lazarette, and if your lazarette is packed full of stuff, if you're quasi hoarder because boats are small and that's the only place you got to put like 17 different things, you got to take those things out and look and find out what's going on. So this wiring harness, they picked it up, re-spliced it together and shabam, they got the thrusters working again. So, you know, luckily they didn't crash the boat coming and going when they noticed it was working, but that's you know, Murphy's law is that's when things actually start happening in our boat. You're coming back to the marina and it's blowing 20 and you're trying to park the boat. And that's when the thruster is going to give out and you're going to be having a bad day. Spend some time now while you're tied to the pier, best place to work on your boat and just look for things like corrosion, like wires laying into the bilge, um, putting on um, corrosion block, your foot switches, for example, um, and you'll see, we've, we've got some lists, like that's the way to go is to just really inspection is, is this, this huge amount of stuff. Um, your fuel filters, your fuel system. So we, this isn't a full, and, and by the way, we do teach classes up in Anacortes. Um, I'll give you the website later. Um, Mark teaches, he's going to teach a weather class coming up and fun stuff, but the early warning signs are there. And so now's the time to check them out. Don't wait until it's that first cruise to Friday Harbor to make sure that Herb's Tavern didn't burn down, you know, and they're still pouring beer. But um, get in there and check it out. So on the YouTube channel that I've started, which is really good for boat owners, the Scallywags, you should watch the vacuum gauge tech tip. There's your early warning sign that your filters are plugged. If you see signs of this, it tells you you're gonna to know to change them before you go out and head into the islands. This is a battery that I find. I get all sorts of these pictures. We could go on for hours. Um, the battery terminal is just, I don't know what that stuff is they put in the batteries, doesn't matter. It didn't protect the uh, terminals at all and it just fell off. And that was the reason why the refrigerator quit working and the cabin lights, okay? Um, clean white oil absorbs underneath your engine. If your engine is puking oil and leaking diesel fuel, you whatever it is, let's have it clean and ready to go this spring and know if something's going on and then take care of it ahead of time. So after you've looked around, the other really important thing to do is to go out and do a good spring shakedown. How are things working? Um, do the sea trial. I know Leonard and Lorena just did this. They took their boat down to the Seattle Boat Show. They taught some classes, worked in the booth, and that's a great shakedown, you know? And of course, they looked over the boat, but they just didn't take off for Seattle. They crawled through the boat, they checked it out, they make sure everything was working, and then they went on a nice cruise. And so when you're out on that, on this early cruise, we want to look at operating temperatures, we want to look at RPM, we want to know what's what. Um, remember, your diesel motor should always start just like it's brand new. Actually, you're, you know, I always used to joke around if it was an old Ford pickup truck and you had to coax it, you know, as gasoline, that would be okay. Our gas outboards, same thing. They are, they should start just like the day they were new. And if you have to coax it a little bit, get it looked at. So, but will it hit full RPM? Um, there is so much you can tell about the health of an engine by just doing a quick little shakedown cruise. Go out and run it at your normal RPM and then do a full speed test and document those results. If they're repeatable every six months, that's another, you just keep clicking off those boxes that you're getting closer and closer to hopefully having a really nice cruise. Um, so second homework is get in tune with your boats. What do things look like, sound like? Do a sea trial before it's vacation time and document any results or abnormalities. Um, as a technician and my technicians, they're always like, I wish boat owners would write things down or take pictures and let me know in the moment what was happening. Because if you wait to get back to the dock and then you schedule a service, 
and the technician can't be there for two or three weeks, and then you're trying to describe the situation, you might have lost some of the important details that could save you a ton of money because it's going to save the technician troubleshooting time. And at 100 plus bucks an hour, that's a big deal. So I go out, you know, this is my old engine cruising at 2200. What's the temperature gauge? Where is it at? Everything's good. And then every, every uh, fall and spring, I crank it up. My engine is supposed to go to 2600. You notice it's not quite there. It's always been that way. I call it good enough. But I always know when I get out and I get up to my max whopping speed of seven and a half knots, when I go and crank it right up, I gain a half a knot. I see the RPMs go up. My temperature goes up just a little bit. And I just make sure that the boat can do that. And if it can't, perfect. I would rather know now or in February or March and you know, get a mechanics lined up than wait until June. And all of a sudden I can't get a mechanic to fix this on my boat. So, and just one little thing. So when you see my checklist, it starts to make sense. Let's just think about a typical diesel engine. You can take one little part of your boat this could be your anchor system, your steering system, it doesn't matter. How do you know what maintenance needs to be done? Well, on an engine, we could quickly say there's a battery, oil changes, you might oil sample, fuel filters, anodes, impellers, all sorts of stuff, right? Hoses, belts, it goes on and on. The nice thing is, if you have a John Deere, a Yanmar, whatever, you don't have to you know, create this. You can go to your engine service guide, and it's going to tell you what needs to be done. Okay, well, how do I know? I mean, I could tell you by looking at this, oh, fuel filter, whenever the vacuum gauge says, anodes twice a year on my engine, you know, impeller every other year, oil change every 200 hours or 12 months. But I am like the rest of you, even though I'm Mr. Maintenance, I can't really remember when the last time I changed my boat's oil was. And so that's where it becomes problematic because we forget things. While I was in Florida, I had an alarm go off on my boat. One of my students had to go down there. It was the smoke detector battery. So luckily it was not urgent. I didn't follow my own procedure and change the batteries every six months in the smoke detector. So now I got Alex down there on board, sending me text messages from Florida that my boat could be sinking because there's an alarm going off. It caused a lot of panic. And it was because I didn't follow my own advice. And so how do we do that? Well, oh, that's right. I always slip in little pictures to remind me that I, I do these talks because I just love boating in the Northwest. Um, so keeping track of maintenance, there are apps and I haven't used them, but there's plenty of apps for free or a few bucks. Um, there's a uh, computer software. There's like wheelhouse technologies and some of the other ones. You could have a good old fashioned notebook. I used one for a number of years before I went digital. But I have to say that um, my favorite is this uh, from James and Jennifer Hamilton, who've been around the world in their Nordhaven, and they shared this. Um, they have a maintenance log and it's free. It's Microsoft Excel, and I'm going to show it to you right now. You just go to their site, mvdrona.com, put maintenance in the box, and download it. <clears throat> and they're great. They've written some cruising guides for our area. But what it looks like is this. And it looks a little complicated when you first open it up, but it's free. You're going to download this thing. And I'm going to see here. Um, did that jump over, Leonard? Could you give me a thumbs up? And so, okay. So here's the thing. And if, if what happens is Excel knows what today's date is. And when I open up my maintenance program, I have my engine hours. That's all I have to put in. Most of you should be able to figure out how many hours you have in your motor. And you notice that when I mentioned, I just said, I'm not sure when the last time I changed my oil was. Well, it looks like it was March 1st and it's supposed to be changed every 12 months. And so it's turned red. And I have OCD and all sorts of other complicated things with acronyms, but I do not like to have red in my boat. So I know that that is overdue. I haven't tested my start battery. Um, I haven't checked my fuel filter. So it's interesting. If I change this to about a thousand hours, 
Oops, some of that. You notice how a couple of these just turned orange. So it has the threshold, how many months, how many engine hours, and if you get close to something being due, it turns orange. If it's past due, it turns red. And it's just a super powerful tool. And then I'm going to show you in a little bit, we have some checklists also that I embedded into this Excel because Excel is free. All you need is a $100 laptop from Costco and you can typically run this software. Um, so this is uh, James and Jennifer again when things turn red. So <clears throat> there's a few issues with free. I always say there's nothing more expensive than free. The, when you download it from them, you need to go in and either you or your maintenance provider, you need to find out when your particular service intervals are. And it's really easy um, when you look at this, if, you, if your engine is 400 hours on the oil change, you just type 400 in the cell. That's what's really slick about it. You just modify it for your particular boat, which is good, except it's also bad because it's relying on you. And it would be nice if I had a package I could give to you for your Ranger tug that just said, boom, here's everything you need to do. So, um, but I still think that it's, it's one of the best tools that I've used. So, because you could miss something. Once again, you go back to the forums and, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> as you learn things about your boat, you can add to it anytime. You're not limited by that, by that research. So, um, and by the way, I mentioned earlier, a boat that's been very well maintained has a higher resale value. It's easier to sell. And I know we never really think about selling our boats, but trust me, three foot itis, it's a thing. And so you could be looking for that upgrade. So, so here's your homework. <clears throat> Figure out what system you're going to use, whether it's an app, some software. Maybe you need to update or modify what you have. Get your equipment put in here and create this list. Okay, so where are some places we can get that? Well, um, if you keep an eye out, sometimes Mark teaches a, a, a class called Manage Your Boat Like a Pro. Um, we have checklists we're going to give out. Um, the flotilla to Alaska. This is where our main checklist started because we were taking people to Alaska and they asked us at the Wagner Guide, a, a, you know, 100 questions about what do I need to do to make sure I'm ready for that trip. And it doesn't matter if you're going to Alaska or, or for me or over to Herb's Tavern on, on San Juan Island, you know, um, you should be maintaining your boat to a certain level if you want it to be reliable. And so um, this is going to is available in the Wagner Guide. Um, if you email, let me see, I think it's on the next slide here. Yeah. If you email info at wagnerguide.com, you'll get a copy of the 2021 Wagner checklist. And it's a great place to start. And so thank you, Mark, for sharing that. And um, you and I have contributed and put this thing together. But we're not selfish. We would just assume that you were happy and enjoying the waters. So um, you can get this list. And then your homework is, so here it is. Here's a task, you know. Does your engine room have enough lighting? You can't inspect it if it doesn't. Um, uh, your macerator, turn it on. And so this is about a four to six page document of all the things that we know from experience that you should do. And um, it, it, it is comprehensive and we understand it takes a bit of time, but let's go through and do it. And you could easily take these tasks. In fact, I have started doing it. Um, I've got an embedded worksheet on the Cruisers College website. So under links, I got a bunch of resources um, this is where you find out classes that we teach in our course and stuff. And uh, this is the, the reason I really like this in my web guide, he, he, it caused a little grief because I said, I have to be able to modify this as time goes on. And so I've got it started and then I got sidetracked with this big sailboat project, but um, I'm going to be building on this checklist as well and importing everything from that Wagner. And uh, so it's, a, it's something that you can log into, you can download your own copy and you can get a, a checklist, right? You think about it right now, do you, you know, I got pulled over by the Coast Guard again this year. Weird, every year they pull me over. So it happens if you have a good looking boat, apparently. Um, and my batteries were dead in my awesome little Weems and Plath 
the stress light. It, it wasn't on my checklist. And there you go. I need to add it to my checklist. And so um, I didn't have batteries on board, but luckily they didn't give me a citation or anything. They thought I was a nice enough guy. Had everything else there. So um, anyways, I, I think that we're, we humans, you know, unless you're like Rain Man and have this photographic memory and can really stick to things. If you don't have a checklist, if you don't write it down and go through it annually, or more frequently than, than that, hopefully you open your computer and it says, you know, check your ditch bag. It's been a year. Do you have your, you know, is your registration, is all your paperwork ready? Is, is you know, expiration dates, these kind of things. Um, it, it's really easy to forget. And, you know, let's just do it now. Now's the perfect time to crawl around and, oh, there we are. Again, look at that. Awesome. That is up in uh, Toba Inlet. People complain about the rain. I love the rain. As soon as it rains, oops, I head for Toba if I'm up in Desolation Sound because the rain causes the spectacular waterfalls. Um, I always recommend a couple of uh, alarms um, as we wrap as for every one of my talks. And because boat manufacturers don't necessarily put them in, we want to have a high bilge water alarm and we want to have an exhaust temperature alarm. Uh, both super easy. Um, Aqua Alarm is a company that you can Google um, and have your mechanic retrofit those two alarms. But if you don't have them on your boat and you should test your engine's alarm system when you turn it on, you should get a low oil pressure alarm and maybe you know a couple of others, but make sure that you're, you're, you're doing that on an annual basis. And then uh, a little shout out as you get your um, checklist going and before we ask questions and give away that tool bag, um, that website that I mentioned, our industry is desperately short on technicians. And I do joke about it with all my students, you know, like we are awesome. We can take money from all of you in the audience who own boats on a regular basis. They're happy. They need technicians. And so I've been working for a year and a half or so all through COVID on big social media platforms and things to encourage young people to come into the industry and to help us out. And so I've just been sharing tons of stuff on Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube. Um, I, the Skagit Valley College, we are the scallywags. Apparently it's got something to do with smelling bad and being drunk and funny in public or something. I don't know. My, my students picked it out for us and created our our little logo here. But uh, check us out. Like I said, there's a lot of tech tips that are um, very valuable for boat owners. It's, an, it's a platform that I use to share things with my students, my technicians, that is a lot of it applies super right to, um, to you guys. Oh. Mike, did you want to talk about uh, King's Pride? Yes, so here's King's Pride. So this is um, our big project that we've been doing through COVID so we can keep students working and um, have a good time. My slideshow, hold on here, there it goes. And so what we, what we did is we bought this old uh, West Sale 39, Bob Perry design, owned by the father of one of my staff members. And we have 50 plus videos of us tearing this boat apart, putting it back together, new engine and new rig and all sorts of just fun things. Um, it has been sailed to Mexico, Hawaii and back. It's got a great pedigree. And I mean, it just needed everything. So our, our idea was we would film it and we're gonna do more projects like this. Um, and the joke is always with free labor, you would think we could make money. But no, that is definitely not the case, I don't think, in the boat world. Um, because old boats are corroded, like you see. The, this thing hadn't been maintained in a while. We tarped it and took the mast off and the whole thing. And, and oh, sorry. She hold looks on. beautiful, Mike. She's almost yeah. completed. It, it's pretty amazing. And have you sold it yet? No. So we're going to um we're we're gonna put out a couple more videos of where we're at we're not quite done but we never planned on finishing it because the owner needs to pick the style of anchor they want and the color for the canvas for the dodger 
and they need to pick their own particular brand of electronics. But we are going to um, have the boat avail opened up during the Anacortes Boat and Yacht Show in May. And Trawler Fest is going to be in Anacortes. The school is going to be there. We're doing some classes, but we're going to have staff so people can come and look at it. And we bought the boat for $25,000. we have sunk like $75,000, I don't know, thousand into it. I've got a spreadsheet on the Cruisers College site, but we're going to auction it off. So during the whole month of May, we're going to start taking bids, let you come see it. We're going to, you know, like I said, the boat show will be there. And then, uh, Right at the end of May, we're going to take whoever's got the highest bid. We're going to put the new bottom paint, put the boat in the water. We're going to do some sailing, us that worked on it. And then we're going to transfer ownership this summer to uh, somebody new. And then we're really hoping it's somebody local in the Northwest that wants to, to take this boat and, and go out cruising. I mean, it's capable to go around the world. And so that's um, exciting, go, Mike. Uh, it, I watch this project evolve and it's just amazing. And it's such a great teaching experience, but uh, it, it's a phenomenal boat you've selected and, and the work is just incredible. Yeah, thanks Mark. Yeah, you've been on board and we've got lots of local industry support, the Wagner Guide supporting us. And so um, go check us out, likes and uh, sub subscriptions help, but really we're just sharing information. We're doing a lot of cool side trips and boat projects on the channel, those tech tips I talked about. I've got a really cool uh, lineup of people that we get to interview that I love to share. Um, I feel a little selfish, you know, I've had Bob Perry in the building numerous times. He's coming back either in end of April or May. Nigel Calder's coming in this fall and um, we've got Al who created Wake Speed, one of the best voltage regulators, you know. And so um, I'm getting set up in the shop so we can video and share these experiences similar to what you guys do with these webcasts. But unfortunately, when I bring in people, they're during the day and they're, they're there mostly for the technicians and, and to support the projects. But I'm going to, most of them are willing that I can film it and, and put it up on the channel so that all of us can kind of experience, you know, some of these legends like Bob Perry and Nigel Calder. So that's fantastic, Mike. Now, Mike, uh, I've been watching the, the polling going. I, I'm not sure who has the answer as to what the right number of tools are in Mike Beamer's tool bag. I, I know. I don't know. Leonard, did you? Uh, we do have, we actually have a winner on this. And uh, looks like the winner with the closest number is, let me go back up to, it's it very good. Yeah, it's a very good guesses in here. It's Dan River. And uh, Dan put in a number. the The actual number that uh, that Michael Beamer gave us was ninety three, and uh, Dan River actually had eighty nine point nine nine. Now we're not point nine nine is, but it was if it was a strategic number, uh, he did that. So we had one other that was close. It was an eighty nine number, but the eighty nine point nine nine wins the bag. And Dan, if you can uh, call, telephone the Wagoner office tomorrow and let them know your contact information for getting that bag to you. If you're in the area and would like to stop by the office in Anacortes, uh, you're welcome to pick up the bag right there. But give a call to the, uh, the, the Wagoner Guide office. You can go on to wagonerguide.com, go to contact, and there's a telephone number in there. And, uh, and come in and let them know uh, where to send that if, you need to, if we need to send that to you. So congratulations. Fantastic. Excellent. That was super fun. Any questions for Mike? I haven't seen any come in, but if we have any that continue to come, we'll uh, uh, we'll uh, uh, carry them into next week's show. We we'll, might be able to get Mike to answer a few. And uh, otherwise, Mike, as always, just a wealth of information, a lot of good tips, fantastic. And uh, can't thank you enough for spending your Thursday night with us. These are always good Thursday nights. It's fun to, to hang out and get boaters together. And uh, that was, there was good things that came out of, you know, the COVID era. We all got yes. to do a lot of Zoom stuff. And, you know, now I don't actually have to drive to Mount Vernon for staff meetings. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I can stay in Anacortes, but we could get yeah. together on Thursday night and share information and have fun. I love seeing your pictures of, uh, 
the Virgin Islands there. I guess I'm going to have to go over there and check that out myself one of these days. I've offered several times, as well as Leonard and Lorena, and Brian, I think, is going to be asking next. So uh, <laughs> love to have you down here on one of our trips. So I do have a question for you, Mike. Can you um, run down the list of different certificates that young people can uh, uh, get through training at the tech center? Absolutely. So we actually have one of the best training facilities in the entire country. So we have high school programming for juniors and seniors. And then um, in my program, our students will come out with three to five industry certifications on top of having a, um, a certificate or a degree from Skagit College. So we do ABYC, electrical and diesel and gas engines. We do ABYC systems. Um, we're working, uh, some of my students are working towards ABYC now as an advanced electrical because of all these new electrical systems. We do two different um, NMEA, National Marine Electronics Association certificates, the basic installer and NEMA 2000. And in fact, we have some boat owners. Our electronics classes run on uh, when, Tuesday, Wednesday nights from six to nine. And we have boat owners that come and take that class so they can build their own network and understand the NEMA and they could actually get a certification. Um, and then we have a Yamaha outboard level one training as well. So we get lots of certifications. And then at the end of the two year degree, I'm pretty excited. Skagit actually has started a bachelor's. It's a two plus two. And one of my students is going to do it, meaning two year technical degree with some ABYC master tech status. And now he is going into two years of applied management. So he's going to take business classes for the next couple of years so he can run his own business or be a yard manager. And so pretty proud of our school up here in the Skagit Valley. We're really doing great. And of course, we have Cruisers College, like Mark's teaching weather. We've got electrical coming up. We do seminars for weekends for boaters. And so um, it, it's a super it's fun It's a great place. program and uh, definitely worth looking into. Well, Mike, thank you again. And Leonard, Lorena, what do we have next week? We will continue our discussion on what's happening in British Columbia with the different marinas, which ones are open, which ones are closed. And we also uh, will be joined by Celine. She will be talking about the brand new Spring Boats Afloat show. She'll be joining us and, and giving us details about the exciting events that will be going on this spring at the show in Seattle. That's great. That's fantastic. And we don't publicize that one, right? I mean, well, we don't want to fill up, you know, email with a bunch of junk, right? So we don't send out the reminders on that. We just encourage people to join, right? On the, on the webcast light, yeah. you mean? Yeah. 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 So if you uh, register for that, we'll send you a reminder. So if you let us know that you want to be reminded, then uh, you'll get some reminders on that. We're, uh, we're aware of not all flooding people's email inboxes with, uh, with stuff. So trying to keep it to good, good information that we send out there. Appreciate that. Well, great show. Mike Beamer, thank you again for joining us. Mark Bunzel, safe travels to you. I know you're coming back to the Great Northwest uh, this week. So uh, we'll see you here soon. Leonard and Lorena, great job as always on the updates. And we will see everybody again next Thursday night right here on the Wagner Webcast Live. Good night, everybody. Have a great night. Good night.